Hey, welcome to part three of the Abacus series. Today I'm going to review a newly purchased Soroban. Stay tuned. So viewers of my channel might be interested or curious into why am I starting to, to create a new series on the Abacus? What's that all about? Well, part of it, of course, as you probably know from the first episode of this new series, part of it has to do with the fact that I've been interested in the Abacus since childhood. But it really has to do with, I think the idea of a mechanical bead frame calculator dovetails nicely into this larger world of mechanical writing devices like mechanical typewriters, fountain pens, mechanical pencils, wood case pencils, and mechanical film cameras. So it is a whole aesthetic of mechanical, uh, I hate to use the word analog, but non-digital um, media and uh, devices that we might use uh, for tools in our life. Uh, I think the abacus serves that function. I think that the abacus is uh, aesthetically beautiful and um, functionally uh, elegant in its simplicity. And it is elegant in its simplicity uh, due to the fact that it has been around in, the, in human culture for thousands of years in various forms. And I only touched on that a little bit in the first episode. But I think it kind of naturally dovetails into a physical media kind of uh, lifestyle that you might be interested, if you've never learned the abacus, you might be interested in picking it up. And I'll be covering in later episodes a little bit more detail on how to learn to do basic addition and subtraction on the abacus. And I hope you stay tuned. I hope that interests you. Almost all of the abacuses or Soroban that I have in my collection are what you might call antique or legacy era Soroban from the era when they were used either by adults in merchants commerce or in the training of school children. I haven't purchased any new Soroban uh, or abacuses with the exception last year I purchased this inexpensive. This is maybe like an $8 abacus. I purchased this. It's Chinese made. It's very low grade construction quality. This is a nine bead abacus, which is the reason why I bought it and which we'll talk about the nine bead abacus in a future episode of this series. But um, other than these classic ones like this one, uh, you know, adult size beads, uh, the uh, d denominations of yen on the dividing bar, obviously built uh, with traditional techniques of construction and materials and uh, intended for use by adults. Other than that, I've never bought a new Soroban or an Abacus until a couple weeks ago. Last week, in fact, I was, uh, uh, because of this new series, I got curious into seeing what was out there in the market for new Soroban and Abacuses. This is the Yellow Mountain Imports brand 17 digits, that is 17 rod Soroban with a push button mechanical clear device. And it represents typical of the new era of inexpensively made Chinese Soroban. And this one costed me less than 20 US dollars excluding shipping. And actually with Amazon Prime, I get free shipping. So this thing was on about $18, I think, total. Came to my door in three days, I think. So it comes in a cardboard box. Um, it might have had a plastic baggie. I don't remember. I don't have that bag with me right now. But uh, let's take a look and see what it is. So it is a what I would call kind of a medium-sized abacus. It's not the school grade abacus for instructing children. So it's not a really small school kids abacus like one of these that the, where the beads are really small and adult sized fingers have a problem using it. No, this one is definitely more adult size. It's not quite as large of a bead as that older abacus I showed you earlier, but it's, it's sufficient for adults. I wouldn't want the beads any smaller. So let's take a look at this less than $20 Soroban and see what the pros and cons are of it. So first of all, the pro of this abacus is it is a larger size frame. It is 17 rods, 17 decimal places. Um, it is uh, what I would call medium sized beads instead of the small school kid size beads. It has a rugged uh, frame construction. 
So it is uh, some basic, simple, beveled type corner joints. The dividing bar has this kind of a, a cut in into the side pieces, the way it's fit in there. Um, it's using not fine Japanese style joinery like you see on the traditional abacuses, but it's using simpler things like, for instance, uh, wood screws that hold in these reinforcing dowels on the back side. Um, there's other reinforcing pieces like these that are glued into slots uh, and also some more smaller dowels on the ends for reinforcing. Um, but it is, it is a simple, rugged construction. I think it would be plenty rugged for daily use by either student or adult. It has metal rods instead of uh, bamboo, and they look brass-like in color. I don't know if it's actually brass, but they're brass-colored. And it's using the corner reinforcing brackets that you see on the lesser expensive 2.5 Chinese abacuses. So they're uh, thin pieces of metal. They're using brads and they nail them into the corners just to provide reinforcement. Uh, so inexpensive construction, a rugged frame. I'll tell you one of the things I really like about this Soroban is there are uh, feet, rubber feet, that are provided on the bottom. There's, it's interesting, there are two on this side and one on that side, so it's a tripod kind of arrangement. But when you put it down on your tabletop, you literally cannot move it. It is grippy, it doesn't slide, so you literally can use this with one hand. And you don't need, you can actually operate it without needing to hold the other side of the abacus. And because it has three feet instead of four, that means it'll never wobble. You'll never have the problem of, of it wobbling with uh, uneven feet because with a tripod arrangement, you never have a wobble. The other advantage, of course, is uh, the low cost. And I think for me, the primary reason why I bought this and the one feature that this abacus has that my classic abacuses don't have is this mechanical clearing mechanism. And let me show you on the back side what that is. It is a push button that operates what you might call a bell crank, and when you push it, it operates two sets of bars that serve to separate the beads away from the dividing bar. So you can mess up the beads and then push it like that and it clears them. And it may be easier to see this way. Let me just push it and it clears it. So why would you need a, an abacus with a mechanical clearing device? Well, the traditional way of clearing a Soroban is you have to tilt the beads down and then you run your finger between the top of the bar and the top beads in order to clear the top beads away from the bar. Um, you don't need to do that with this. This is much quicker. You just push it like that and then you can continue with your calculations. Push it, you can clear it like that. So. That is a, a very nifty feature and one that I wanted to try out. And it is, it does work quite well. And I think it does speed up your calculation process quite a bit. Okay, let's talk about the cons. We've already talked about the pros, but we'll talk about the cons. Keep in mind that this is a $20 abacus. Um, so one of the cons, of course, is that it is crude construction technology or technique. You don't have the fine joinery like you have on the classic abacus, as I, as I mentioned earlier. There is a crudeness to the construction that is obvious. So for instance, if you look down at this reinforcing bamboo dowel where the wood screw goes through, you can see where, the, where it's split, right? The screw kind of split the wood out. And you can see other signs like, for instance, the finish on the abacus is not included in the inside of the frame. It kind of is left kind of crude and partially finished on the inside, right? So that's pretty obvious. And also the quality of finish on the external surfaces is very rough. It's not been sanded down and refinished multiple coats. It's just been basically given one coating, maybe sprayed on, and that's it. So it is basically a very primitive or crude finish. It's not heirloom quality. And then maybe the other criticism I would have is I think the dividing bar is probably a little too thick. If you look at the finer Japanese-made Soroban, it uses a thinner dividing bar. In its defense, however, there's one other feature that I should have mentioned earlier in the, in the pros, and that is 
You have the dots uh, that denote the decimal point and the thousands uh, commas not only in on the dividing bar, but you also have these individual one beads that are colored slightly lighter to denote that as well. And what they did here is pretty nifty, is they're doing the traditional way uh, in the Japanese soroban where the dot is actually on the ones bar, but they're also doing it the, the brass brads are done in between the bars, the more you might think of as a Western way of thinking about it, where the decimal point is between the ones and the tenths column. So it has uh, the flexibility there, where if, whether you're a Westerner or an Asian, you might be able to use this equally well. So back to the cons, uh, the other uh, fact of this abacus is the beads are not wood, they're, they're molded resin, some kind of plastic, and they are fairly crude. I mean, they're not perfectly uniform. You can see how they were molded, but they're adequate. They're more than adequate. The shape of the beads is pretty much the traditional Soroban style. They're, they're not actually biconic because there's a slight convex shape to each half, but they're more than sufficient for use. And I'm sure that this abacus would give a person plenty of, plenty of good use over the years. So let me leave you with some closing impressions and thoughts about this inexpensive abacus. So this is a good learner's abacus uh, for, I would say, older students and adults who might be interested in learning the abacus or Soroban for the first time. It has the mechanical clearing mechanism that makes operation of it a little bit easier. And I think if you practiced with this abacus, it has sufficiently okay ergonomics with the shape of it and the size of it and with this clearing device that if you practice enough you could gain great speed in operation uh, in calculating long columns of numbers uh, as is done frequently with abacus contests in Asia. I would say that for adult size fingers you wouldn't want the beads any smaller than they are, but I think they're adequate for most people. I think ideally you might want bigger beads, that is, rather than this size, but I think they're sufficient for, for a beginner's abacus. When I was preparing for this video, I have a lot of thoughts in mind about uh, how the abacus might be used by adults. and which really they're not being used by adults. Uh, most abacuses these days are being used as uh, educational devices for children. And, and the only market there is for adults learning the abacus is actually adult teachers of the abacus have to learn how to use the abacus themselves. So there is a market for teaching teachers how to use the abacus or Soroban. But as far as actually adults using it, other than uh, the few remaining uh, markets and shops in traditional Asian cultures where the abacus is part of their culture. Other than that, there isn't a wide-scale use of the uh, abacus or soroban by adults. But if there was a market for that, I would like to see an abacus with beads larger than this and more adult-sized fingers. And for practical use in day-to-day -day calculation, most people's use is addition and subtraction and maybe tax calculation like percentages. And so you don't really need 17 columns of numbers. And as you might have remembered from one of the previous episodes of this series, the reason why there are so many columns on these abacuses is because for multiplication and division, you enter one number on one side of the frame, you enter the other um, number on the other side, and you do either the multiplication or the division in the middle where the answer forms itself. Most people, their daily need of a calculator is addition and subtraction, and for that use, you don't really need more than 10 or 12 columns, I'd say. And so if I was an adult looking for an abacus to really use as a day-to-day -day tool, I would look for something larger size beads and fewer rods. Unfortunately, something like that with artisanal quality beads and uh, construction techniques really isn't readily available. And that's gonna be probably a topic for another episode of this series. But for now, I would say that this abacus would satisfy the need of any adult that wanted to become interested in learning the abacus out of curiosity, while at the same time, it becomes 
actually an item of decor. You know, it is rather pretty, and you could see uh, when you're not using it for balancing your checkbook, you could see having this on display, maybe on a shelf or a cabinet or whatever, certainly prettier than one of these. You wouldn't want to put one of these on display in your pretty room. Uh, these are ugly, right? Plastic calculators. But hey, a little, a nice wooden abacus. They're not only practical, but they're beautiful, right? So that's been my review of the uh, Yellow Mountain 17 rod abacus Soroban style with mechanical clearing device. I hope this was helpful to you. These are less than $20 on Amazon. Uh, I, of course, and I have no connection to the seller, but it's just uh, one that I picked up, and it's very interesting. I think there's, it's interesting that there is this new uh, resurgence of manufacturing of inexpensive Soroban in China. If you're curious about the abacus, you should go look around and see if you can pick one of these up. Well, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and you have yourselves a great day.